Have you ever wondered how power memory mirrors work? Memory mirrors allow multiple drivers to set their memory position. It allows one driver to come in and set their memory position and then another driver to come in and recall their memory position. It also allows the car to tilt the mirrors when you put it in reverse. So let's go inside and open up one of these mirrors to see how it works. Let's start with a regular power mirror. This one's out of a Toyota Camry without memory function. This is where the mirror would be and it rotates about this pivot point here. Now if I remove it by the pivot point, you can see that there's two actuators here. One for the x-axis and one for the y-axis. Then move in and out and up and down about this pivot point to move the mirror. Now that corresponds with these two motors here that rotate to move those in and out. I've got four wires coming from the motors for this mirror. If I turn it over there's a few screws that I can remove and then I can pop off the cover revealing the two motors. As you can see this motor here turns this gear via this gear for your x-axis and this motor here is for the y-axis that turns this gear. Since there's no feedback device in this system this is called an open loop system and there's no memory function. This is the switch that comes out of the car. You can control the left mirror or the right mirror. This is for the x-axis as well as the y-axis. So for open loop control the way it works is pretty simple. We've got 12 volts coming into the switch here and then that goes out to motor 1 and motor 2 which control the X and Y axis respectively. Here's a demonstration of how the actuator is working. As you can see the actuator is moving the mirror to the outward position. This is the motor out of an Acura TL mirror with memory. As you can see this is the pivot point and the actuators for the X and Y position. To store the position of the mirror it actually uses these two nubs which are attached to the mirror and move in and out to track the position. If you flip it over here you can see there's two screw holes if you remove those, I can take off the cover. Like that. So inside the Acura mirror, we've got two standard DC motors that turn screw gears for the actuators here, just like the other mirror. And for the feedback, we've got these two linear resistors that move up and down. As you can see, there's a little contact pad there. It varies resistance from the top to the bottom position. And there's two for the X and Y axis about the pivot point. The position of the mirror corresponds to a resistance value in this linear resistor and is sent back to the computer so it knows where the mirror is. Now if I remove this board here, you can see that these are the contact pads for the x-axis and on the back contact pads for the y-axis, each having two wires that lead back to the computer. Now this design is known to be somewhat unreliable because it relies on these physical contact pads that wear out over time. Here's the memory motor out of a Toyota Avalon. As you can see, this is where it pivots against. And if you look in here, there are two DC motors. And they have a rack gear, as opposed to a spinning spiral gear that we saw in the other motors. This gear will move up and down along the ball joint to control the motion of the mirror. Pop this guy off here. I'm going to remove this wire here. And pop off this back piece to reveal the circuit board. If you notice, these two DC motors are not orthogonal to each other. That means that to move in the Y axis, both of them will have to be moved. Now if you turn it over, you'll see for the closed feedback loop, there are two potentiometers. And if you look closely, you'll see the little gear in there moving. That's actually the potentiometer that produces a resistance. And that resistance varies as you move the motor between two and three K ohms. And that will be picked up by the computer to memorize the position of the mirror. I'm going to desolder these four points to get this board off so we can have a closer look at the potentiometers inside. And we're just going to pop off the circuit board. So as you can see when I remove the board from the motors, if I turn it over you can see the linear potentiometers that rotate with these gears. As you can see the head is moving back and forward and that gives a resistance reading out to the computer to tell where the memory of the mirrors is. I'm going to remove this motor here by going into the back with a screwdriver and popping it out. And when I release it here, you can see this is the DC motor and this is a clutch here. And this clutch is actually responsible for the slipping that the motor is allowed to do at the end of its travel or if the mirror gets stuck, it actually also reduces the gear ratio so that the mirror moves nice and slow so you can adjust it properly. This closed loop feedback system is actually more reliable than the one in the Honda because it's away from the elements as well as it's integrated directly into the drivetrain as opposed to being attached to the mirror directly. Closed loop control is a little bit more complicated. We start with a 12 volt power input going to the switch. That switch goes to a memory mirror ECU. That ECU has a number of inputs including the one, two and set buttons 
on the dashboard to control the memory settings as well as a reverse signal from the transmission for the tilt down function. The ECU will then control motor 1 and motor 2 for the X axis and XY axis respectively. There are two linear potentiometers that are attached to the shafts of the motors. That becomes an input to the memory mirror ECU so it knows what position the mirror is in. When a memory position is selected the memory mirror ECU keeps sending a signal out to the motor until the variable resistor determines that the mirror has reached the exact position that's desired. This is called a closed loop control system where the current position of the mirror is always monitored. Due to the lack of space inside of this housing, the motors cannot be perpendicularly opposed. For this reason we have the X axis as well as the X Y axis. The X axis controls the horizontal motion and the X Y axis will control the horizontal and vertical motions of the mirror. In this case if you'd like to move the mirror in the Y direction it'll simply be the adjacent component of this right angle triangle. One way the final position of the memory mirror can be controlled is by using a proportional integral derivative controller or a PID controller. On the position time graph a PID controller can be used to prevent overshoot and oscillation as dictated by the green line and also steady state error as dictated by the red line to give you a nice smooth and quick response as dictated by the blue line here. And that's how memory mirrors work. Many thanks to my Toyota Camry mirror, Toyota Avalon mirror, Acura TL mirror as well as the Toyota Solara switch for participating in this video.